Oh, yeah, hello everyone. I, oops, I did the order wrong. I uh, hit record and then I hit next mission, whereas I should have done other ways to do it. I bring you to the most dire. The cerebrate that we thought we had killed has arisen again. The creature's battered form was reincarnated despite the considerable damage we inflicted upon it. Even now, the cerebrate drives its brood in preparation for their next offensive. It is as I feared. It was folly to believe Tassadar could be trusted. The Conclave will not soon forget his wanton betrayal. Nevertheless, we must stand resolute, for attacking defenseless Cerebrates is not the way of true Kotos warriors. We shall overcome the entire swarm with the might and the fury that is our heritage. Executor. We shall lead our main strike force to the province of Sion, which has fallen to the Zerg. It's time the Zerg felt the wrath of the Sons of Ire. Prayer to Phoenix will remain here with a small detachment and guard Antioch from any further assaults. Adun be with you, Executor. Bring swift death to the enemies of Ire. Okie dokie. Oh, okay, this this is the mission I was thinking of. I thought this was mission two and the other one was mission three, but I had I had them in mess up. Oh my goodness, Scouts look interesting. Cool. Um so already I'm gonna tell you we're not gonna be using Trigger's this mission. These guys get to stage for defense and nothing else. We're gonna have these guys and scouts. Sorry, my nose is itchy. We're gonna have the scouts fight the mulists, and I'm gonna hope that there's no scourge because it's gonna throw a wrench into things. Alright, goodbye, Zergwin. You will not be missed. Um, so it's interesting for the Protoss we have, uh, you know, the Conclave, or the Enclave, whatever you want to call them, be very set in their ways, and then Task are trying to progress. It's like saying, like, "Hey, like we need to trust these Dark Templar to do things, and so on and so forth." Though I like now, I'm self-aware of like, well, maybe I'm going too far in the plot because there's a chance that someone watching this may not be familiar with the plot of Starcraft. You know, I wouldn't want to spoil it for them in case they, could, you know, that is. Uh, in case that is the case, the word of the day is the case. Also, boy, we got supply blocks again. That is a fragile class of game supply blocks. So, I guess, I guess in the case of the probe toss, the probe toss, <laughs> um, they've been around for so long that their methodology seems to be effective. Or at least they, they have the confidence that what they're doing is effective so it's like worldwide change our ways um because like we're the protoss like we've been around for so long that to challenge us it's like futile like we've overcome every other foe so you know why are the zerg any different and, that, and that's interesting and i guess like from that perspective i understand the mindset that Bam, bottom. Starting some zealots. Um, because you're seeing like like 200 worlds, which like really conveys like, how old and ancient, well, the same word, how ancient the Protoss are. But then the thing is, is that things change, right? So even though the Protoss may have not been challenged in their dominance for, you know, however many years that doesn't mean that's gonna last forever like, I mean you look at the Roman Empire and for as impressive as it was and for as long as it lasted like it still eventually ceased to be right and I got I I, I think for people watching this like that's gonna make sense to them so part of me wonders why I'm like giving this lecture like this is not like if I could you know sit in front of the Protoss Conclave and be like, hey, like this, what you're doing is not gonna work for these reasons. Well, whatever. They're, they're not in a position they're gonna listen, anyways. 
<laughs> this is a weird dialogue now. But I mean, that's like the interesting point about the story is the whole yes, let's upgrade some of this. Uh, is that even though like there's like the wisdom that hey, like things can change, or uh, even though we've conquered all these foes, it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to conquer the Zerg as well, or that like we can't get challenged. Oh, and I think we can get cross legs, or Zelda legs. Sorry, not cross legs. Um, which is, you know, I, I guess similar to real life, where we might think, oh, you know, things are gonna be the same, or like, you can always do this. It's like, well, no. And like, I guess the linchpin to this is like Hume's problem of induction. Because, like, when you consider that, is like we make these predictive analysis about the future, but there's not a lot of contradiction that it might not necessarily be the case. So, rephrasing that, it's really easy to say that, hey, um, I'm going to make these predictions about what's going to happen in the future, whether it be today or tomorrow, or what have you. Uh, and I think this is going to occur based on these things I've already experienced. So it's like, okay, we can do that. So, and I'll give an example afterwards to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So we make these, you know, predictions, and we act on them, even though, we're like, it could be the case and they don't come to pass. Like, so, I might go into work on Monday, assuming that, like, I'll have a job, because, like, hey, every other time I've gone into work, like, have a job so I would do that but I could get to work on Monday and my boss could just tell me like sorry like we've had to lay you off for whatever reason and even though are we working in the Citadel? No we aren't even though I had the assumption that I was going to have a job that wasn't necessarily Guaranteed to be the case. I think we need another pro one to gas. We should also go and investigate the left side of the map. Let's go now. And we'll get some more gateways too. So in the case of the Protoss, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, yes, they've conquered all these other foes, so they've been led to believe that they can conquer the Zerg, but it's not a logical contradiction that, you know, the Zerg can best them. And that's just it, like, you can never really predict the future, like, no matter how much it may seem like you know everything, or that things have come to pass, like, it's just... You never know. Like, truly. I, love for combat. I mean, even, like, heck, in the StarCraft community just recently, you consider in Control's passing. Like, you have a man who passed away at the age of... Do those Zerglings have adrenal? What are you? Let's finish this. Alright, so we're definitely going to want to take space. Oh boy, what was he talking about? Something interesting. Oh, yeah, like. Incontrol passed away at the age of 33, and I don't think anyone was really expecting that to happen. But then, like, as we found out, like, it wasn't a logical contradiction. And I guess I should. Uh, for him to pass away, and I guess I should expand on that thought. I was like, what do you mean by logical contradiction? A logical contradiction would be saying that, like, you know, absolutely violates our, um, our... I think not say you understand the world, but I don't think that's quite accurate. Like, so, for example, uh, something that would be, like, physically impossible to happen. Like, so, let's say, let's say if I wake up in the morning and it's like, oh, well, I only exist in both my house, but then my, my dad's house as well, or my brother's place. It's like, oh, like, there'll be a duplicate of 
Fredgy. It's like that. Well, no, that's impossible. If you don't like that, that just happen. Like another me isn't just gonna materialize out of nowhere. Like that just won't happen like, under any circumstances. So that that would be a logical contradiction. Whereas I say, hey, like I'm gonna go over to the grocery store tomorrow, and then uh, I'm going to get attacked by a bear. While that might be very unlikely, it could happen. There's nothing saying that it wouldn't happen. So like even and even though it's very unlikely, it is within the realm of possibility. All right, so we have one group of zealots, and I, I want to get more skeletons for him very much. Heading out. Wait for something to be finished. Oh my goodness, it's so pricey. You've got enough minerals. Uh, I think buying the cannons also added a lot to the expenses. So I think that should be an adequate defense. Eight zealous. And I don't. I, I'm defending these locations. Just because, like, I don't know if the computer attacks them. I don't want to be caught my pants down, so to speak. Because that would not be pleasant. Because then we lose all of our probes, and it'd be like, ugh, oh, that'd be a bad time. So, and I guess, like, with the, like, in the respect to Protoss, I guess, so, you know, them not wanting to change the right ways, like, I think we kind of mapped out the logical why. So I'm throwing on the word like logical law. People are gonna think it's like, oh, this guy's saying that because he wants to appear smart. You have not enough minerals. Um, but also too, I think like, the Protoss in this case, like they want to maintain their heritage because like that means something to them. Um, and that's the case for a lot. Oh, hello. How much damage do they do for the air missile? Quite a bit. Yeah, wow. Scouts pummel other air units, that's for sure. I, I, I'll talk about scouts in another mission. But why they're not actually great. Well, I, I mean, I'll, I'll do it now. Uh, basically, the short answer is that they're overpriced for what they do. But I'll, I'll get more into that later. Hello. Um, so I was gonna say, like for heritage and like tradition, like I think people really want to hang on to that because they they put value on it. And I'm I'll say up front that like I'm not necessarily a person who puts lost dog uh, into that. So forgive me if what I say that it comes off condescending. Um, but people want to preserve the traditions, the family values, and all these things, because I guess it's like, part of a legacy. And I think there's, you know, a desire to have that last for as long as possible. Like, have these traditions and stuff, like, be a part of our lives. And, you know, part of these generations for, well, for years to come, really. Um, I mean, even, like, you can consider, say, uh, whatever group we want, it's like chances are pretty good that they probably have a tradition. Alright, there should be more than adequate for defenses. Uh, and I wonder if, you know, culture is, you know, inherent in our society, or like... Um, it's like the idea to try and maintain that or hang, hang on to it, where, where, and I guess like for me the reason why I don't subscribe to it as much is that like things are always are in flux and they're changing. So even if you like consider like these traditions of, um, like let's even just like look at Christianity, like Christianity in the 1200s is very different than Christianity today, and like that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just we're gonna go once the scouts done. Um, that's just more the way it is. Uh, 
you know, like, and I think, like, in some ways, the Christianity, there's some things that are very similar and not much has changed in some aspects, but in other ways, it's, so. uh... Very different, and this is coming from the perspective of someone who doesn't really... I'm not religious at all, so there obviously may be errors in what I say. Like maybe, for the most part, Christianity is very similar now than it used to be. But I, I do think that I would imagine that at least there are some differences. And that's the whole point of what I'm trying to say is that despite people wanting to keep things similar, it's changed over time, anyways. And I think for me, I. I value adaptability more than uh, time honored traditions. Because adaptability, I think, for me, it says like, you need to look at your current surroundings. And I, and I think this is a bit of a disingenuous argument for me, all of a sudden, because I was talking about like, culture and heritage and trying to preserve that. And then I kind of just did like a 180 and was like, okay, well, now we're going to say, talk about adaptability. Which that really sounds like a trait to survive in the wilds. Whereas tradition, like, not so much. Like, one seems like an ev evolutionary feature, where the other just seems like, well, completely unrelated to that. But I guess, like, in the case of the Protoss, it's like. Their adherence to the. Oh, hello. Oh. We go save our base. I knew it. How savage. Yes, I'm aware. Oh, no, 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 don't attack that. You let us build some stuff. I don't think you're gonna catch that, buddy. I long for combat. Alright, let's try this again. Oh good, they attacked uh, this base. Okay. Let us finally commence the attack. Oh, don't let the scourge hit you. Oh, those zealots are staring into everything! See, and this is why I was talking about earlier about how uh, I think the goons. I, I don't think they're bad versus Zerg, at least not that I'm aware of, but um. Goodness gracious, are good. Uh, and also, I think we also have you know, way too many. Um, but that's fine. Let's build a gateway and a stargate. Beautiful. And I, I don't know if I ever really finished my thoughts on that. My thoughts on tradition and, uh, like, adaptability. And I think both are good for different reasons. Like, and I, this is where I should just say, like, I think I'm trying to talk about things that are kind of, like, uh, beyond my expertise. No, not that, you know, that's really stopping me before. 
But like in this particular instance, it's like I I think it would do me well to just really sit down and think about what I'm trying to say. Whereas um. Playing a game of StarCraft and then trying to tackle this topic um, maybe isn't necessarily the wisest thing to do. Uh, if only for the reason that, you know, they're pretty. It's a pretty, you know, complicated subject, right? Like tradition and adaptability, but also, like, too, like, sometimes like, we have these rules and um, things that we do for a reason, right? Like, sometimes like, these rules exist in place because like we've been taught by time that like so this is the best way to operate or same thing for traditions like um you know sometimes we might observe traditions or might have things in the culture uh not for sentimental value but because like it just helps keep our way in place and, and i think that's what i was really trying to say well not sorry i'm not gonna do that like that gives me way too much credit um because I think there's hanging on to tradition of uh, like sentimentality, which I think for that I'm not as big on. Whereas, you know, observing tradition out of practicality uh, is much more my speed. Yeah, it's also being toasted. I think there's also probably an argument out there saying, well, you should do things like that. Or, I, even though I favor pragmatism, that might make, make it sound like that I don't have any, uh, any fondness or sentimentality. Um, and even though I might not value sentimentality is a lot of people. I still think it has a place because I think it's part of the human experience for lack of a better term. Um, and I don't think the Antioch is under attack by overwhelming Zerg forces. Praetor, you must hold your position for as long as possible. Fight on, Brave Phoenix, and know that the gods watch over you. Entaro Adun. Oh boy, maps. Stop saying about that. Oh, it's probably best I won't get into it. But anyways, guys, that'll do it for me. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Until then, goodbye.